Help, help! Yep, another damsel has been kidnapped. This time, you're a sumo wrestler. Moving swiftly on then. For such a massive rikishi, the fellow's pretty soft. You take damage really easily from the mindlessly approaching enemies with little invulnerability between hits. Timing is key. You jump with the A button, the height of which is determined by the length of time you hold the button. B does your palm attack thing, which turns into a shoulder toss causing your aggressors to comically fly off the top of the screen. I mean comical as a synonym for farcical, there's not much amusing about it. The price of this cart alone means that I don't have the manual, and probably never will, so it took me a good while to realise that double tapping a direction causes your fighter to run. There are certain spikes and pits you can't cross without doing a running jump. I messed up a ton, so you don't have to. You're welcome. So, in my moment of slightly embarrassed curiosity, I tried out other button combinations too. It turns out you have more than just your simple palm attack. Double tapping a direction and pressing B is a headbutt. Up and B, in good old Castlevania style, fires this hand projectile that you can collect. The gauge on the bottom tells you how many of these you have left. These are alright, if not much more powerful than your usual attack. The one that is really useful, however, is the sumo stomp thing. Apparently it's called a shiko. You can do this by pressing down and A. This stuns certain enemies and kills others. It's particularly useful against those little ones that are hard to hit. There are five areas, each with three levels and a final boss. You have health points in the game, which are replenishable by eating the foodstuffs that enemies sometimes drop. Beside the HP gauge is an experience points one, which tells you how many EXP you have and how many you need to level up. There are three aspects to power up. Your hand attack power, your stomp power, and your health. Boosting your attack power is probably the most important, as this not only governs your strength, but what blocks you can break open. Later on, there are some blocks that those with a low attack level aren't strong enough to break, and you'll miss out on lots of food drops and experience points. The foot stomp isn't very useful to power up, as the regular one can take care of most enemies in the game. An upgraded one can be useful against some bosses, but you certainly don't need it. Focus on the hand attack, primarily, with occasional health boosts. I like the way the game looks. The backgrounds are nice, if a little generic, and the enemies are varied, if a little strange. The Japanese-style music fits the theme, obviously, and has a nice pace to it that sounds like something you could punch a smaller man in the face to. The timing of the controls takes a smidge of work to get used to. You'll find that when attacking an enemy, you often take damage yourself too, but it's just a case of getting the timings down. Sumo Fighter is not a bad game at all, but it clearly didn't convince the Western audience too much, as a North American cartridge is pretty rare, and as a result, way overpriced. You're looking at a good $40 at least for the game pack alone. Trust me when I tell you that it's probably not worth it. You can get a Japanese one for way less, and there's no text to read anyway. I bought a US one though. Of course I did. I'd see a therapist about my ridiculous obsession, but between this, Cool World and Shaq Fu, I can't afford one. Thanks so much for watching this video. Let me know your thoughts on the game down below, and if you can spare a second, give the review a quick thumbs up, it really helps out. Subscribe to the Portable Power Podcast for a new Game Boy review every day from Monday to Friday. Or alternately, new episodes of the podcast drop every Saturday and Sunday on whichever platform you get your pods. See you later on.